Hello Year 6, welcome back to the next video of this Monday. Um, so our next video is English and that is exactly what we'll be doing. Now, similar to our maths, okay, we are going to keep the lessons as close to possible as what we'll be doing in school right now. The only slight difference is, is again, that delivery method that is coming more from the video to start with. Um, I will be Skyping you uh, within the next hour to go through any questions that you may have, um, but otherwise, this is the main teaching part here. Now, we are planning and presenting a short report today. We're going to be looking at different chronological reports. Um, again, the same as mathematics, your groups are here. Um, you are more than welcome if you want to challenge yourself to give yourself an extra challenge, okay, to do a different group's work, that's fine. Now, it won't last today too much because you're all doing the same task anyway. There are no worksheets that will be needed. However, before we go any further, make sure you do have a pen and a pencil, or a pencil, uh, and a piece of paper next to you to make down some notes or to complete any little mini activities in this video. Now, your first one, as we would do in school, is we're going to be looking at a spag ninja starter. Um, so I would like you to add these things to these different sentences. So, get ready to pause the video, have a go at it, and when you've done it, press play again, and then we'll be able to get on with the next part of the lesson, okay? So, pause the video now. Right, okay then. Um, I hope you've got all of these um, completed by now. And here are your answers, okay? So to add the comma, to make a fronted adverbial, okay, before I go to bed, comma, because remember we could take this away, and I clean my teeth and brush my hair, is the main clause that would still make sense on its own, strong enough. Um, this is obviously giving us some more information. Add commas to the list. Well, these place names are the list, so make sure you've got a comma here and here. Um, add a or an to this sentence. Now, remember, it's a vowel sound here, so it's going to be an. Okay. Add the hyphen, strong hyphen wills. Okay, it's drawing those two um, adjectives to make a compound adjective. Be careful with this one, okay? But keep it in your head because we will be doing this again later this week. And add capital letters, uh, Disneyland, Paris, January, December, Monday, and Sunday are all proper nouns and therefore need capital letters. Okay, so well done if you got all of those correctly. Now, today we're going to be looking at chronological reports. Have a little think, what is a chronological report? We have discussed both of these words before. Can you remember what they are? Now then, what is meant by chronological report? Well, a report is usually a formal text uh, that gives information about a particular subject. So again, formal, that means no contractions. Um, again, something that you might write more seriously than maybe talking to your friends. So again, think about no contractions, think about the uh, voice uh, that you use, and again, no slang words involved. And it's about a particular subject. Now, chronological and non-chronological, we can have both of these as reports. We're going to be looking at chronological reports. Chronological. Can you remember what that means? It means time, okay? So chronological reports are in time order. So when it happens, what happened next, then next, and so on, until the end. Non-chronological can be in different order. The time doesn't matter too much. So we're going to look at reports that are in time order. Chronological reports. They are similar to recounts. That's when you say about something that you've seen or heard, uh, maybe you've done it. So like what you did at the weekend, you would tell me in time order. You wouldn't start by telling me that you went to bed at night, but then you woke up uh, that morning earlier in the day, then you did something. It would get very messy. So chronological reports are in time order about something you have seen, heard, done, or maybe even investigated, like a science investigation. And they are written in the order that things happened. Now examples of these are newspaper reports, sports reports. Again, it wouldn't make sense to put these into a jumbled up order because it wouldn't help the reader to understand what's going on. Uh, biographies, uh, interviews, and a police report. These are all different examples of places that you may find a chronological report. Now, let's look at the features of chronological reports, okay? So let's look at the features here. Now these are possible features you may not get all of them, you may uh, get only some of them, okay? But these are possible features to help you identify if this is a chronological report. 
If you want to make down any notes, you are more than welcome to, but I will send this file today onto your Skype uh, group so you can have this copy of this as well. Um, now, chronological reports will use time connectives. Oh, sorry, I went a bit sideways there. Um, they will use time connectives such as um, next, meanwhile, finally, and many, many other time connectives that you could use that are powerful that help your writing as well. So look for those time connectives. Present tense, okay, usually happening now, except if it's historical, okay, uh, basically it's happened in the past. In that case, they will be in past tense. And a lot of the writing that you will be doing over this next couple of weeks with these is going to be indeed in past tense. They could be in first or third person. Uh, they are factual. So they give information. They answer questions such as who, what, where, when, how. They will include direct quotes, okay, from witnesses. Again, we've talked about those before. So if it said like um, Mary 53 from Carlisle uh, told us that, then that would be a quote because we're telling who has said this. Um, paragraphs, a key one. Now remember, a non -chronolog sorry, chronological report will always start with an opening and a conclusion. An opening, what you're going to be talking about. A conclusion rounds off everything that you have spoken about, plus your paragraphs in the middle. So again, paragraphs are key. Uh, they may include labelled diagrams or illustrations. Depending on the chronological report, they could be chatty and very informal, okay, um, or most likely they will actually be formal pieces of writing. Um, we are going to be looking at the chatty version today because you're going to be filming one for me. Um, but generally, okay, they would be more of a formal report. You may have examples, uh, for instance, of such as uh, you'll use generalized language. You might even have technical vocabulary. You may, for that one though, if you had those, you would need a glossary. Remember, glossary explains those technical words to the reader if they don't or they may not understand. And of course, probably one of the most important ones here is the structural signposts. And what I mean by that are subheadings and bullet points. This one here, the subheadings are key, okay? You will need to use subheadings in your written reports. So these are the different features that you might find in a chronological report. Remember, a report that is in time order. Now then, if we look at our task for today, you're gonna to be creating a short report, about 90 seconds of something that you've seen or you've witnessed or that has happened. That could be what you did yesterday at the weekend, okay? That could be about something that happened in school last year. It could be something about a holiday that happened two, three, four years ago. It doesn't matter. But you're going to give me a short report. Remember, that will be in time order because it's chronological report. Your oral report, which is spoken, should be no more than 90 seconds. So I don't want a 5, 10, 20 minute video. 90 seconds. Um, so try and use those features that we have mentioned. But it might be helpful if you plan your report out first. Well, how could that look? Well, this is an example that I did earlier today. Um, so my report that I would be speaking about would be my day yesterday. What would I talk about first? What happened first? Well, of course, I woke up. Now I wrote here, woke up with boys jumping. So they come running into the room and they jumped onto the bed to wake me up. Now, I've used some keywords in red here, words that I could use to help me, um, that powerful vocabulary or powerful verbs, okay? Delightful, okay? It was delightful when they come with their big, happy, smiley faces running into the room to wake me up. Or maybe it was, oh, it was four o'clock in the morning. It was delightful, okay? Depending on how I say that would give this a different meaning, okay? And you can play around with that as well when you're recording yours. But this is my first one here. The next one, made breakfast. Again, keywords I might want to uh, use, uh, but powerful words as well. Yawning, stretching, okay? And I could use these in my spoken report. What happened next? I completed the Joel Wicks workout to wake up for the morning. Again, wearily. I was weary as I was doing it. Uh, without motivation, I was tired. Or maybe I was bouncing around like a, a jumping beam, okay? What did I do next? I created this lesson. Well, 
It's our first English lesson back. So excitedly, jumping with joy. And again, these would help me as I'm talking to make sure that I use these keywords um, in my sentences. So plan out your report first. You could do a little map like this. Remember, time order, it's a chronological report. So plan what you did. You could use some keywords there if you want to, and then you'll be recording it. So your tasks for English Year 6. Number one, create a plan for a short report. Remember, it's a chronological time order. Number two, remember those features that we talked about. Make sure that you include those features or the ones that you can do in a spoken report. Again, I will send this file to you on Skype so you've got it. And number three, I would like you to film yourself, okay, or get more and more dads or whoever else is at home to film you sort of performing your report. Again, I want to have the completed re uh, reports, completed videos sent to me before 4.30 p.m. today. And I'll give you some feedback about the good things that you have in your spoken report. So this is your task for today. Plan, remember those features, and then film your chronological report, okay? I will be Skyping you again over uh, the next hour. And in that time, we'll be able to talk some more about these features as well. So year six, remember, if you have any questions, um, you can send me a message and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, I look forward to speaking to you shortly. Have a wonderful English lesson and speak to you soon. Bye bye.